Hello everyone. Once again, you are welcome and my name is Avkash and today we are going to cover very important topics related with neural networks. Today we are going to build the CNN or convolutional neural network from scratch like this and we are going to learn the functionality or the architectural component within the CNN network. Here we have convolutional 2D, max pooling, flattening, dropout and dense. So we are going to cover all five of these, why they are needed, how they are needed and how you can make sense of it. Together with CNN, we are going to follow the MNIST example, which is very popular. So we are going to take a working MNIST example, look into its layer architecture, which is convolutional neural network and complete our study by learning each and every component within this convolutional neural network. So thank you so much for your time. If you haven't subscribed my channel, please subscribe it because it keeps me excited and motivate me to keep building great tutorials for you guys. And now we can get ourselves started. Before we go further, I would like to just recap what we have covered in our previous tutorial. So these three previous tutorials we have covered. First one, just getting started with neural networks. Second, how you can create your very first neural network in Python. That's this. And the just before today's, the very last tutorial, we have learned how you could create your very first perceptron your feed forward network, your deep feed forward network. And in the same tutorial, we have looked our basic convolutional neural network. This is exactly we have created. Last time we went through our study that what is perceptron, what is regular neural network, fully connected feed forward. And finally, we completed a just introduction to CNN in our previous tutorial. CNN, which is a convolutional neural network, it has to have a one convolutional layer. It has to have pooling, fully connected layer, dropout, and it has to have the activation function. So this is what we have covered. And our plan was that the next lecture or the next tutorial should have these things covered. Today we are going to cover activation function, pooling, max pooling, average pooling, whatever it comes, flattening, dropout. So these are the things we are going to cover today. So if you haven't viewed the previous lecture, here are the link. They are available at this Python project repo, deep learning folder, or please just visit my YouTube channel and you are going to get all these nice tutorials available for you to go through at your own time. So let's get ourselves started for today's tutorial. We are using TensorFlow and the Keras as our base library for all of our neural network related development work. Now we are defining a sequential model and within this model here are the number of component we are using. So before even we go and say why we are using, we need to take a very quick look at our CNN network architecture in general. By the way, this is our repo where all the neural network related content is available along with Python projects. Within the deep learning folder, we have this common neural network and the CNN folder. So today's content is going to be available in CNN folder and here is the CNN architecture. So a CNN or convolutional neural network is going to take a group of images. So these are the images. They go through with the convolution. Convolution, convolution is a practice to sample your data and we are going to learn that there is a mathematical function we need to apply on the incoming data and that's where the convolution is and after that we apply pooling 
After that, we apply another layer of convolution if needed. Then we pool it. Pooling is another exercise where try to collect the data from previous layer, which is coming out from a convolution and process it using some mathematical function. And depending on a sequence of how many times you need to do convolution, that is up to your architecture. And you are going to take that and that layer is going to be finally added. And there will be other functions such as flattening, dropout, and finally you will complete this layer depending on your output. So this is a very basic CNN architecture. Here, as you could see that we are going to apply the convolution as defined by the architecture. So we can come back to our here and let's define our CNN. So we have defined CNN and here is our summary. So this is a sequential model. Very first layer is a convolution. As you could see here, the kernel is just basic three. The input image size is that which is 128, 128, that's the image size and it has one channel to it. And we have decided that please use bias. After that, in this layer, we are applying the max pooling and here the pool size is four. I'm coming to all, all of these variable and how they work. Then we are flattening this layer, dropping out. We are 50% of the features we are dropping here and finally this whole thing just becomes to our output which is our dense layer with one neuron and the activation here we are using the softmax so that is the definition of our very basic model here so in the next step now we need to look each layer what is happening at each layer so we could understand it little more better so this was just a definition and if you would want to save this model we have already seen earlier that how you could save this model and you can use the netron utility another python library and you can visualize it my previous tutorial have a lot great detail of information about that so here as you could see that we are defining an input shape so when you are trying to create any neural network you are starting with you have some kind of input data and input data you already have it so you already know what size it is so here you could see that we have the input data which is the size of 28 by 28 and three channels it's a 28 pixel by 28 pixel image and it has a three channels and the input shape we are defining as it's a four means there are four images of 28 by 28 and three channel images we have so that's where our input shape is and then what we are trying to do oh sorry now we have defined our x and what x is that x is just a normal layer so at this point if you look into what our x is as you see here that it has four if you try to look your shape of x x is a tensor shape size of four and as you could see here the four each one is a 28 by 28 by 28 so if you take a x and x of zero and you look for x zero shape and you will get a one single image so if you say zero to three is your image if you say x four you are going to get error because there is only three images we have x zero to three three will work here because that's our zero to four so x shape we have got so TensorFlow is a tensor shape we have created. And if we would want to know what is our shape, our shape is from here to here. So that's why input shape and from, we are taking from not zero, from one to all. So one to all. So these are all the fields we are taking. And, and based on this input shape, we are creating a convolutional 2D layer very simple very first step we are creating and here is the definition of tf keras layer types convolutional 2d here is your 2d you need to define kernel size there are several parameters are here we are looking some of the important parameters so first what we are trying to do 
we are trying to create a convolutional layer 2 okay and here are we are defining so we are defining this this layer input is x layer so this x we have just tensor is your input layer and then let's define first and then i will be explaining you piece by piece so we have defined y is our convolutional layer now and as you could see here that it's the shape of 4 26 26 2 something has changed at this point so we need to understand that when we apply this convolutional layer and this these parameters this value became from 4 28 28 3 to 4 26 26 2 so first 4 is the number of images so the batch size which is basically the total number of images or batch here so that is still the same we are not reducing that but the 28 by 28 became 26 by 26 so there the convolutional happen with the size of 3 so 3 was only a kernel here just when we had 3 I would say for some time let me change this kernel size now nothing has been changed only difference is that we are changing kernel from is a matrix of 3 of 2 and now we look into the y of shape now you see here that 26 and 27 and 2 it means the 26 by 26 now it's became 26 at 27 so what is this change here let me change this to 2 by 4 now it's became 25 by 25 so what is happening here that this is what your kernel is really being applied here 2 is your bias at this point in this layer so what we are trying to do is what let me use two also so you could at least get an idea what is going to happen if you are you going to use two and your y shape will be 27 so when you had two 28 became 27 when you had three 28 became 26 when you had four 28 became 24 so 24 25 20, sorry 25 25 26 26 20, yeah, three. So why it is happened? It means that the convolutional happen or convolution happen, and that is what we are going to learn. What is the convolution when you have an image? So here is we have to understand how the convolution happen, and for that it depend on what kind of kernel you have. And kernel is very important. Here we have kernel size two two two, but here we have kernel size three by two so let's use two what is going to happen here in our convolution that you have an image in this example we have image of 28 by 28 so this is think it's a 28 by 28 image we only see five columns here these values are between 0 to 255 five. depending on these values you are getting the pixel so these values are the pixel and depending on the pixel value in from between 0 to 255 you are getting a particular dot depending on what color it is from 0 all the way to 255 0 may be for example black 255 may be white so between 0 to 255 you are getting a shade of between white and black black so this is your image that is what it is and these are three channel three channel could be rgb if you have three channel it has to be three times if it is one channel there will be only one color so now we have seen that now depending on your kernel here we have kernel three by two but in this example where i'm using and by the way all the resources i have taken from these links so the credit goes to the folks who have created I, I didn't create any of these content i'm just using there so this is the kernel so what's going to happen is that kernel is going to be applied so depending on what size of kernel it if it's a two by two then kernel is going to apply here and depending on what size you are trying to take that kernel that two by two three by two or one by one or just singular kernel that will apply here so multiplication happen like like here and the weighted sum of each all of this whole multiplication is created here so if you look into here your image was 
5 by 5, 3 by 3 convolution happened and each 3 became 1. So your 5 by 5 image output became 3 by 3. If you would have done this thing 2 by 2, so your image was 5 by 5 but your kernel was 2 by 2. If your kernel was 2 by 2, every time you are losing one field. So out of these four field, five field, you would have got four field back. Same this way. So depending on how big your kernel, what if your kernel was four size? So it was four by four. It means one time you have run this, second time you have run this and all of the fields would have been covered. It means in four by four, you would have got only two by two kernel left. So depending on depending on what kind of kernel you have and what is your incoming data is you your the number of fields number of, of features coming out will be depending on how the multiplication happened and what you have what what was the result at this point so this output is also called the feature map so this is the feature map where the weighted sum all that sum has been calculated and this was made as a your feature map. So if we are talking about this example, this is our example here and we are not using any of the activation function here, something similar to here. So as you see here that if you are using an activation function and your activation is ReLU, then what is going to happen is that the bias weighted sum, everything is going to be calculated and depending on your activation property, your feature map will be changed. So the example here when we look into this this example when we have 28 by 28 and we are applying a kernel size 2. So what is going to happen is that from 28 you are going to get 27 by 27 feet. If you will do 3 you will get 26 by 26 and you are going to use 4 you are going to get 25 by 25. The difference here is that because of here your 3 by 2 you have in that case you are going to get simply you can see that 26 by 27 because your rows will be 3 size but your col your uh, height size will be 27 because it's a 2 so for that reason so hopefully that clarifies you how the convolution happen here as we have seen with this image or this image this is when we are not using any activation function here when we are using any activation function and if you are using ReLU today we are not going to learn a lot about activation but act ReLU is a very simple way that all the negative fields they become zero and that's where you are getting your feature map here if you are not using a uh, ReLU then everything without any activation this is what you are going to get your feature map here ReLU gives you this this feature map so it means when this y is ready y is coming out like this now you are going to apply the max pooling so you are taking this max pooling type of layer and you are applying on y so we are going to apply and let's see what is z here now you see here that we took this four images of this type and we have applied the pool size four and now we are received six by six. If we try to use pool size two, your size became 13, 13. Just like a pool size two became half. If you say pool size three, almost one third. If you say pool size four, so what is pooling now? So I hope that convolution is clear. I didn't go very deep because if I go a little more deeper, you might get confused. So initially, I just want you to understand as a starter, just have these two images in your mind and that should be enough for today. And now we are looking into the pooling. What is pooling? So primary option or primary objective, what we want to do is that using pooling, we want to reduce the size of feature map that's what we are trying to do and remember we have created this feature map whether it's a this or this this non-activated this activated one 
Now our objective is to reduce the feature map. So when you have created convolution from image to convolution, you got a little updated image. Now, now you are applying pooling and pooling is going to reduce the feature map like compressed it. You can have pool size and it is tried. So if you will reduce the number of feature map, definitely you are going to have the lesser connections. So you can also say that it is the downsampling operation executed over each feature map. And that's what we are saying that in this example, convolution happened, then for all the batch images, the max pooling happened. So downsampling happened here. So that's where the downsampling is happening. And here is the very good example of what is the pool map here. So what's going to happen depending on what is your desire when you are so you see pool size is a four or pool size could be four by four two by two three by three depending on what your objective is so here you see that we are defining the pool size four and when we say pool so this feature map which started as a 28 by 28 source image now our feature map is 26 by 27 and then we are creating the pool size of four so the pool what happens is that it takes your feature map and it depending on your pool size it takes those features and if you say i want to create the max pool or i want to create the average pool i want to create the sum pool it means so when you define your pool size what happens is that it takes that size of pool so for example in this here this is our input feature map and we are saying that let's try to have a pool size three by three. It means one, two, three, these three by three will be selected. This is your pool size. Now you will choose what is the math on pool, max, average, sum. So if you say max, it means that out of these nine square, you are going to get one value, which is the maximum of that. And that will be here. Then you are keep, then you are going after you move three, then what you are going to go, you are going to get next three. And you are going to go next is what's going to happen. Three is taken here, then three is taken here. You are going to get one, then three is taken here. Then you are going to get one more and slowly, slowly your reduction will happen. It means that when we were doing the convolution, depending on your kernel, you were just moving. The only thing was the kernel size was that that big. So if you select four, your kernel was four by four, you are selecting that many images. So if you have two by two, you are going to get four block here because two, then you go next to the next to the next next to. If you are using four by four, you only gonna get two. Similar to that, when you are building this a uh, pooling, you are selecting the that many object and then you slide to the next so if we say our max pool is two and we are using the maximum value and we are getting 13 here just half because we are selecting two 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 and each group of two is giving us one max value so that's why we are getting 13. now if we say three so there are 26 so it's going to get eight. So three seven ja, three eight ja, 24. So eight of them are selected here. So hopefully that clarifies you that when you are using 26 of the, your width, there are 26 features and you are selecting three. So three, 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 three. So you will get 24 covered. Last you have two left three, the pool size is three, those two will be discarded. Similar to that here, when we were doing here three by three, so we selected three, one, two, three, four, five. So we have got five. Okay, let's, let's put it this way. So if our pooling size is three by three, so we use three by three, then three by three, then three by three, three by three, three by three. So there should be five of them there are seven of them so why there are seven then the new concept come which comes is the stride 
So pooling is a combination of pooling and stride. So stride is very important to understand. So what happens is that, so here you see that it has a stride two. It means you said one, two, three, and stride has two. It means after that, what you do, you actually move two steps. So you were here, so we move two. So one, two step, and then third will be here. So we use three again. Then stride one, two. From here, one, two. So one, two, three. We have got this one, two. So three of them. Next, after that, we have moved, we were here, three, we moved three. So this is one more, and then two more, one, one, and one. So that's why you got seven of them. And we will get exact same check here. So if our size was 26, and we have used pool size three, it means select the block of 333. So three, eight is a 24, we have covered, there was nothing. Now I will say, let's use strides strides equals one. Now what's going to happen is that if you look into here, your size became 24 because even the pool size was three, we didn't jump three. We only moved one step. We only moved one step. It means that 26 all the way will go to 24 because last we will not have two, three left. So that's why we are going to get two. Now, if you say my stride is, two. If your stride is two, now your result will be 12 because you have three, then you move two and then you get one. You move two, three. Now if you have a stride, three. Now you look into result, which is same exact eight, nine. So if I remove the stride here and I look into result, that is exactly the same answer. It means strides, the way it's defined is that what is your pool size? Pool size, if you will not define a stride, it means the pooling is going to happen. You give, define your pool size, which is defined here and like a three by three and you are just three by three, three by three. You are just keep shifting that many blocks. What is your pool size? Strides, it can go or you can, what if you can move four? Because you are saying your stride is four. You are losing data because you have 26 so you are three then you are going th fourth one fourth one and then you are going to get about four six ja, four three ja, 18 and then you are missing about six 18 plus six 24 so you are getting six same thing with your down how many strides you are coming so three by three three by four so it is very important for you to understand both pooling as well as your convolution which is simple. So after the pooling, the next step is that we are doing the flattening. So flattening is really, really very simple. So I will uh, run here. So at this point, you can even look into the, the first one is a six by seven of two, six by seven of two. So because this is our batch size. So I will just go and I will say, what is its shape? Okay, and now we are flattening. So what's going to happen is that the flattening is basically let me just show you. So four by 84. So what happens here, because six times seven times two. So you had your each, each image here was six by seven, two channel. So now depending on your image, it has to flatten everything. So all the rows and column multiplied, so you got one big flat line there. And depending on two channel, it has to be two times. So you have four images, length of 84 very simple same thing for any example so flattening is in mathematically depending on whatever your dimension is your input dimension they all multiply and you are going to cast so 10 times 10 times 2 here so max pool we just co covered you have pool size and you have stripes we haven't talked about padding we just leave it as it is we are not really focusing on that and flatten is just very simple. You take and you multiply it. So depending on whatever your shape is, you process it, you are going to get that exactly your size. Flattened. So flattened we have already covered here. So for example, I will change this to shape so it will take less space. So if we were doing the convolution and here we can change this convolution to just two so y shape is 27 by 27 by 2. 
and then max pooling we are using the three pool and if we use a three so three three eight is a 24 three nine is a 27 so it should be nine by nine so let's do so three 27 by 27 pool size is three so we are doing max pooling and sorry stride stride is four so we need to make it stride three and that will be nine by nine four it shifted it so if you do not define a stride it still is going to be nine by nine this is our shape now we are flattening so it will be nine times nine 81 times two it will be one six two so flattened 162 so four images with 162 flat this is just a you know how your image really look like and one thing you can always just because we are here i could show you so when we were at here before flattening so when you look into z first value so here is the 9 times 9 by 9 by 2 so you have 9 by 9 by 2 and when you flattened it here and if you look into after flattening how it really look like it will be one single array with all 162 elements here so when you are working with the neural networks these simple math you have to learn slowly slowly if you haven't done like the matrix 2 by 2 matrix 3 by 3 matrix 4 by 4 how everything happened because i have some experience that's why it's easier for me to calculate in my mind so having this matrix manipulation will definitely going to help you immensely so please you have to do some uh, some study by yourself now so dropout is basically the total number of features what is coming into so this one was our network and then we are dropping it out so dropping it out is basically the taking the total number of features and it dropping depending on percent so and when this is going to be happen that is happening at the training time when you are training so what's going to happen is that these 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 dropouts will be defined in a way is that so so you see so this happens to when you are training so this is a neural network and when you apply the dropout bunch of these features will not be available depend on percentage you are using so only some features are available so in in, in that scenario you see that automatically the communication in your network became less because now the noise is gone so for example just having this node node is gone all the con re request coming to this nodes are removed all the require all the connections from this node to anywhere else they are also removed so just using two removal very quickly you are going to see that you your uh, network became really very small one second what it does it helps you to not learn a lot means it helps to prevent overfitting means if you have all layer connected you might end up memorizing everything because everything is available so depending on what is the best threshold for applying your dropout but it's definitely going to assist you and there are a couple of talks also if you, if you are going to read is that you know where to apply where not to apply you know, applying the applying dropout on a fully connected layers and applying dropout on convolutional layer are fundamentally different so when you are applying on a fully connected layer means every network is connected with every network correct because by definition you are saying fully connected layer it means the the neurons from the previous layer and the neurons from the next layer are fully connected now you apply a dropout when you apply the dropout even 10 percent now 10 percent neurons are not connected now you you no longer have a fully connected network or fully connected layer because dropout has changed the, the whole math so when you are talking about the uh, convolutional ne neural network and the application of dropout that's you have to understand what is the applicability here depending on various places and various people experience way more experience than me they will give you very different opinion about dropout so whether you use dropout or not in your convolutional neural network here we want to learn what is dropout if dropout is applicable what is going to do and that's what we are learning here so very quickly we figured it out that it is only, it will not be visible when we are going to see our example because in this example when we are applying the dropout you will not see any change in your shape it still is going to be shaped as it is because there is 
no change whatsoever because that is only going to happen when you are going to perform the training in real time. So there is no visibility for us. Finally, we are creating our final output layer and that is the our dense layer. So depending on whatever your number of neurons, the input layer will written as a output times. So this is the so 4 by 10 is your final active and that's where it is. So if you would want to change this to ReLU or change this to softmax, you can here you see that we are we have using activation softmax. So previously we had 162 and our output was 10. So each because they were four our batch size was four. So it became 10 of each one. Now if we use the same and we call it our final is a ReLU. We try to see what happens ReLU and here you are going to see that result is same but majority of the results became zero here. And what ReLU does is that it takes all the negative values and convert them to zero. There is another one is called the leaky ReLU. That's a little different. So for two days in this tutorial, we are just covering the ReLU. And as you see that most of these values became zero because it is possible that those values were the negative. And that's why they became zero. So what, so what we have covered, we have built a very basic, simplest convolutional neural network. And we learn the what happens in the convolution, what happens with the max pooling or average pooling, some pooling, what happens when we do the flattening, dropping out and final layer when we create. We have also covered that when we do max pooling, what is our pool size and is tried. When we are doing the convolution, we also look into our kernel size, how kernel size is happening and the, and the, the relationship between these two layers, convolution to max pooling. Uh, you could do max pooling, convolution to max pooling, then max pooling uh, two times, three times, depending on how many times you have to create your network. So that's what we have covered in today's basic understanding of CNN and the core layer component for a convolutional neural network. After we have completed this network, what I want you to show is that I will save this model, this model and I will be visualizing it very quickly. So here is our model. We are going to save and we will just call it simple cnn.h5. So it will save this model simple cnn. That's the simple cnn. And because we are using Google Colab, so this model is saved at Google Colab file. So we are going to download it. It's a very simple way to, if you haven't done your, wherever your files are, you go to depending on wherever you are. So this is for upload. So here is your machine where your all that data is and everything is going to be available depending on wherever you are creating. Most of the time it's a content section. So simple anything you will save or upload and I end up here. So simple CNN if you want to download is downloads right click and that model is downloaded at our local machine. So from Google Colab, I have downloaded the model H5 format, which has weights and all that uh, network structure, everything combined in one zip file, compressed file basically, and it's available on my local machine. So because Netron is running on local machine, you cannot run Netron at Google. Big reason is that because Netron will go going to start a server there and those ports are not available because these machines are hidden inside the network. Unless, unless you make this service connected with another Google uh, machine and then there is little complex way to do, but I'm not going there. So easiest method is the model I have downloaded on my local machine. Simple cnn.h5, I'm copying here. So now we got that model, simple cnn. We just downloaded 260K. So Netron is already running here. This is the Netron. So I will be loading that model. So I will stop the Netron dot stop. It's not running. Reload. Stop working. I will load this simple CNN. Close it. Here is 
simple CNN. And we can make it big. Here is our network. Input 128 by 128. This is how we have defined. Input 128 by 128. This way. Then whole model what we have. Now you see convolution happened. Kernel was 3 by 3. And after that we applied the max pooling. Then we flattened it and we drop out. And everything from here to here was converted into a dense layer and our output was 1 because we have kept that way for that reason that is our model and that's the final our dense layer. So that's I wanted to show you that how you can take your model save it and you can download on local machine and visualize it. So we have covered that now as to for the sake of completeness. We have understood four important, five important part of a convolutional neural network. So I thought before we complete today's tutorial, we just make sure that all that exercise, what we have done, we can apply into a very simple example today. So what I have done, I have taken this Keras simple amnest example, which is a convolutional net and I have created the very new example based on that and I will walk you through based on what we have learned today with little more details. First, we are importing the TensorFlow and Keras modules needed for us along with NumPy. So Keras already comes with the date bunch of few data set free. So it also has the MNIST data set. So we are loading the MNIST data set into the train and test and we have X train, X test, Y train, Y test. So all the training data and test data is available for us. So if we look into this training data and we can say what is the training data shape is 60,000 images we have size of 28 by 28. Same thing if we look into the X test here, we have 10,000 images for testing. If you haven't heard about MNIST data, which is used for 0 to 9 handwritten digit classification. MNIST is the very old and very, uh, I would say the number one example of learning convolutional neural network. So that's why we are using. So data we have all already downloaded here. And this is, these all 60,000 images are basically images available. So here's a very simple way to look into. You can take uh, any of these X train, you find the ID and you can see that very quickly here. So you see that out of 60,000, this value is one. If you choose a 50,000, this is actually three. If you use a 50,001, it's eight. If you use 27,000, sorry, it must be zero to five, nine, 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 four. If you do not define the C map, it's color. So here we have option to use CMAP if you want to use to the gray, gray scale images. That's why I keep it here. So this is our training data. Similar to this, we can also use the test data. Test data has 10,000. So we need to use the number within that index 0 to 9999, four nines. So you can see test data and training data. Now the number of classes are 10 because 0 to 900 digit identification. So that's why total number of output classes are 10. So very first thing at this point, if you look into your X test, which is the data here, you want to take a look, X test really look like, use the very first one and you are going to get, this is your data. And if you look into the shape, you will get the value is a 28 by 28. So that should give you an idea that we have decided our input size is already 28 by 28. So for that reason, we are going to take and we will make this image to look like a scale to zero and one range. So I will show you. At this point, if you look into X zero, it looks like this. Now, after we change the scale this image here, if you look into your X train of zero, you see here, these values were zero to 255 because that's a color shade. Now they all became float value 
between 0 and 1. So that's where we have changed them. So that's the reason the whole demarcation of this happened. Take the value divided by 255. So you got value everything between 0 to 1. Next, the dimension. Remember, make sure image have a shape to 28 by 28 by 1 because we are adding the channel to it. So that's why the channel is really being added. So I would say, let's take this, add in next line, run this. So 60,000 images of 28 by 28 and 1. So we have expanded a dimension and negative 1 means we have added just one simple dimension to both train and test. Now the Y train and Y test, which is our category, categorical, we are converting them to categorical because total number of 10 classes. So everything became, for all those value, 0 to 9, everything became categorical. Yes, now input shape 28 by 28 by 1 because our input was 28 by 28. And we have changed here to 28 by 28 by 1. Now our model is defined. So keras dot input, we are taking the input our kernel size is 3 by 3 and 32 is the bias here. Sorry, yeah, bias, yeah. And then we are using max pooling, then converting to 64, then max pooling again. Here the pool size is 2 by 2. Stride we are not defining, so stride is whatever this math is really being given. Then we are flattening it, dropping out. You can hide it if you would want, and finally, the dense and the number of classes, so total number of 10 classes we have. And that's where our model look like. And this model has 34,000 parameters, batch size. Here, we need to understand what is a batch size before we try to process anything. So what I have done is that I have created very quick epochs, means how many times we are going to train. Batch size means the total number of inputs you have. We have total number of inputs, 60,000 inputs. Batch size means at one time we will select 64 of images, we process them and that's where the 60,000 divided by 64 will be our total number of images. But if your input data set is divided into training and validation data, then your batch size will be only for the training data. So the total images minus validated validation images equals your total batch size. Actual batch size needs to be processed through your batch size. So that's why we have here. So I will just only use this two. And if we have, so this is our model definition. Here we are defining the model. We are compiling the model. So this is just a model parameter. So compilation is just a parameter. We are using categorical cross entropy here. Optimizer is Adam and our matrix is accuracy. If you want to add more, you can add MSC, MAE, anything in the list. So we are compiling the model. Now this is our batch size. Let me move to here. So we will have, okay. Then we will do a fit exercise. And here our validation split is 0 0.1. So 0 0.1 means the 60,000 data will be subtracted by 10% of the data. So 6,000 records are allotted for validation in each each epoch and so that for each one epoch 56,000 record will be available for us. So, yes. so if we are choosing a 64 batch you will see that when we are trying to do the fit there are two epoch one means we are starting one and the batch size is 64. So 64 times 844 equals to 54015. So 0 to that number. So 54016 actually, 16. So now you could see here that 844 times within a single epoch that training will happen. And this whole network is going to process. So each image will go from this way. Everything depending on how many channels are there. So channels that many times. So this is what is happening at each level. That's why you are seeing here that each epoch and in first epoch, your accuracy was 90%. In the second epoch, your accuracy is 96%. So if you do 10 times, 50 times, you might get 98, 99% of accuracy depending on this definition. If you change any of these value, you might see a different accuracy. And I think it should be done now at this point. 
So if you will change the batch size to after 64 to 128, for example, you are going to get half of the packages. Time will not change because time is still going to be similar because you are still processing. Sometimes if you have a smaller batch, it might take longer. So the batch adjust adjustment is also very important. So you can say my batch size is 128. You define it. Now, if you start this process again, it will be 422. So you hopefully you understood the batch size and the epochs. Epochs is just how many times you would want to train your model. So if right now our model accuracy is 97%, I can interrupt this model building. So your model building, if you look into the model.evaluate, at this point, using the test data, your model accuracy is 98%. So even when we trained this model really, really very really less, just one time, I just interrupted it intentionally, and it's still, we have 98 accuracy. If we would want to check the image, so this is the test image, the test image. Right now, the shape is 28 by 28 by one. And if you would want to, so what we are trying to do is that we are trying to save this test image here. So we could actually show that image. So test image is 28 by 28. So we could show that test image to you. Reason is that because the test, we have already added one more dimension. So I, I just wanted to remove that dimension for you. So that, but I didn't want it to change the test data because if we change the test data, we will not be able to perform the prediction. So I had just copied the test data into a new object. So I could show you the test data value. And then after, if you would want to perform a single prediction, you could do a single prediction here. So as you see here that we are taking a one simple example, and this is a prediction. We have got one out of 10 prediction. This is the overall prediction and we can get, it's called np.argmax. So if your input is seven, it's predicting it's a seven, one value. If you will say that, if you will take a random value here, it was test zero. If you select test, Nine, 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 and nine, and that will be this value. This will be here, and let's see. So this value is nine, uh, I think so. And if you try to NP array, and you say I want to predict the nine, nine, nine shape prediction class nine. So. If you would want to take this model and you want to visualize it, we will save this model. So this is Amnest Keras. We are saving it. That model is available locally here, which is a 445K. Here is our Amnest Keras model. We can download it. So this is downloaded on local machine. Amnest Keras. So we have got Amnest Keras model here. Let's Amnest Keras 81. Let me stop it. It's running. Let's reload. And here is your Amnest Keras model. And we could see side by side. So input, this is 28 by 28. This is our input layer. Then we are doing convolution here. Kernel is 3 by 3. So 3 by 3. Channel 1, 32 is bias here, bias is 32, because by default use bias is true, activation is ReLU. After that, we do max pooling, pool size is two by two, here is two by two, strides is two by two, same, because if you do not define a stride, same value will become your stride. Convolution here, we are doing three by three, 64 bias, 64 bias is here, then max pooling, again two by two. After that, we are flattening, then we are dropping out, 50% and finally our dense layer of input times number of classes 10 and here is our result. So this is what we have applied what we have learned today in the CNN definition mostly with convolution, max pooling, flattening and dropping out these four things we have covered. Really we have covered just a very basic that it takes it takes all the negative values and convert them to zero is that I will be exporting these two Jupyter notebooks which we have created today to this CNN folder. So that will be our deep learning CNN folder will be place where these Jupyter notebooks will be copied. So file, save, copy, GitHub. We have Python projects. This will go to deep learning CNN. 
I have already configured my collab with my GitHub and in the CNN folder, our simple CNN is available with this Amnest one. GitHub should use Python project, deep learning CNN. This one is completed, this one. We can come back here, deep learning CNN. So you, you can go ahead and review them. Quick recap about what we have learned today. Today, everything was all about CNN. We covered the building the basic CNN in this simple CNN convolution Jupyter notebook. And this Jupyter notebook just going to show you that how you could build a very simple CNN and study that step by step. We have covered four key things. These key things were the convolution, how it happens based on kernel, then max pooling, depending on your pooling size and the stride, flattening and dropping out. We also understood what the ReLU does. It means the what the activation function ReLU does. We took the dif difference between softmax and ReLU. So that's what we have covered in the second exercise. We took the Amnest real example and learned how it works if we try to use the exact same learning what we have done with a sample convolution neural network and we use everything into a real world example and we saw that how that example really solves the problem. Finally, we also use the Netron to visualize our network so we could understand whatever we have built using our code and how it looks like in a graphical format. So that's all I had for you in this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I will be going to cover more deep inside the CNN where we are going to look into a lot more visualization through how the training happens and in between training, how the information transmit between one and more layers. So that will be our next topic. I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next tutorial also, because I believe is that whatever we have learned in last two or three tutorials is gonna sum up everything in the next tutorial. So um, it will be great if I will see you in my next tutorial until then, I would like to say thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. For your time, please like it, share it, and subscribe it.